All right. I think most of you here know me, but for those of you who don't, I'm a master certified life coach. I'm an author of a couple books. I'm the creator of On the Six Mastermind, which you'll hear more about later, and The Mastermind. Um, they are just segmented based on income level. I'm obsessed with a lot of damn things. Beyonce, Peloton, running, but mostly helping you create what you crave. This is a little bit about my fam bam. So Silver Fox, Cora Hyatt, Ryan Hyatt, this beautiful blue gray dog down here is my grand puppy Caesar. This is my cat Moses. I actually have a new family member that I just adopted two days ago named Mork, Mork the Beagle. Um, here's just a little bit about me. I'm a TEDx speaker. I have a a YouTube show called Go Time TV. This is just some of the stuff from my book tour. Um, once upon a time, I was in O Magazine, which is very exciting. Enough about me though. Let's talk about what's happening here. This is a distraction-free zone, meaning close down all your damn tabs, silence thy phone, shut down thy Facebook, give yourself time and energy to soak up all this goodness. Now, who would say that 2020 has presented some unique challenges for us, right? Like we've had um, and continue to experience a global pandemic, surge fatigue, which I'm gonna talk about surge capacity here in a minute, the election and more pandemic, right? Many of us are experiencing another shutdown worldwide. Um, who knows what I'm talking about when I talk about surge capacity or surge fatigue? Don't forget toilet paper shortages. I'm gonna get to blessings in a minute, Amy, getting ahead of me. So I've been reading a lot about surge capacity. And basically what this means is that human beings have for survival some go-to things for, for mental and physical health. So you may have noticed even within yourself at the beginning of the pandemic, I know I was very much like, it's a pandemic, um, right? Like we were all, especially in the personal development industry, um, pulling out all our tools uh, to make it through. But human beings really aren't designed to sustain such acute stress for extended periods of time, right? So surge capacity means like we've, like this has been months now. Um, and you may have noticed that your energy has taken a dive, your mood has taken a dive. Um, I was just talking about with my mastermind, um, one of the members of my mastermind group is a mental health professional. And she was just saying like, it used to be one in 10 people were experiencing mental health issues. It's now estimated at one in four, right? So there are some real challenges that we're facing. And um, if you've been feeling a little less than yourself, we get it, we get it, right? Um, that being said, there have been some shifts happen as a result. Um, so I would love to hear in the comments any perspective shifts that you've had. Um, I was just having this conversation with my mastermind and people were reporting diff, you know, changes in priorities or realizations about what matters that's a, real, a little different for them, changes in their business models based on what's happening. Um, you know, shifts happen. And I know for myself personally, I spent a lot of 2018 um, and a lot of 2019 traveling. Some of it was book tour related. Some of it was international retreat related, um, speaking gig related, all those things. Um, but I've been grounded and at home. And so my perspective on a lot of things has shifted and changed. And I bet that's true for you as well. Um, so Valerie says the opposite has happened with me. I'm more productive and creative, so alive. Plenty of my clients actually, Valerie, I'm glad you bring that up, have reported that as well. Um, Stacy 
realized how much I need alone time. Gabrielle says learning to pivot easily, staying focused and more time on pleasure and self-care. Um, boundaries and saying no to activities that were just expectations. Yep. Ellie says, I really love working from home as, as long as the kids aren't remote learning. Yep. Hi, Joy. Meditation, prayer, overall self-care at a higher level. I will say my self-care, I'll talk about it, but I consistency has been something that I'm proud of. Um, but there are other things that have suffered. Let's see. Kelly says, choose yourself, align your values, say no to what you okay. Let's get back to these slides, right? So there's been some shifting happening. And as you look at, like if you have your worksheet handy, if not, it's fine. Just get out a notebook and you can write down some of your answers here. And this is my grading scale explained. Now, listen, I, I wanted kind of an old school report card um, because one of my favorite stories to tell, light up the chat if you were one of the kids that got in trouble for talking too much. So I was raised Catholic and um, attended parochial school from kindergarten through 12th. And we had those old timey cardboard like fold over report cards. And you know, you'd open it up and there'd be the grading system for academics. And then on the back, there would be a conduct section. And I always had like almost all A's, occasionally a B, but then on the conduct section, it was like, Susan talks too much. Susan lacks respect for authority. You know, Susan lacks self-control. I'm like, I get paid for all those things now, but I digress. Our grading system is this, right? You can see it here. A plus, excellent work above and beyond. An A would be very good, but you might be capable of more. B is solid not your best work, C, decent, passable, treading water, getting by, doing okay, not excellent. D is lots of room for improvement. And F is like, oh, yikes, I have checked out in this area. I've been avoiding this, procrastinating or making really poor choices. Um, and so not lately, but years ago, an F for me would have been uh, taxes. Like I, I kind of buried my head in the sand a little bit about entrepreneurial taxes for my first year in business. I learned real quick, you can't do that. Um, I'm just gonna see what the comments. Um, Joy needs to raise her hand. Oh my God. My dad said, I wish your conduct was as good as your grades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gina is an enth enthusiastic student, but she needs to learn to raise her hand. Yeah, that was Cora. Cora always got that one. Okay. All right. So now as we're moving forward, let's talk about this is where entrepreneurs tend to want to focus 100% of their grading. Like how much money did I make? Y'all, this is a small piece of the pie here very small piece. So, but let's talk about it. Um, so when you're evaluating, look at how much money did you make? Did you achieve it, exceed it? What happened? Right. Um, I did not hit my revenue goal. There were distinct reasons why I still get kind of cranky about it. I still get a little cranky about it. Anybody else feel a little cranky? because revenue is just one thing. Joyce says, but I need my coins. Me too. You're right, Angela, it ain't over yet. Yeah, I wanted it all. Yeah, 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 okay. I'm still open to making more and more and more and I'm tired, yeah. Valerie says, I was glad to get what I got. I like that attitude. Okay. Mary says, my business is just starting, but my husband's business in which I'm working is doing great. Awesome. Angela says, thanks to you. I'm making money easier and faster and it's more fun. I 
freaking love that. I'm going to talk about that a little later, Angela. Gabrielle says, and I'm making more than I thought in marketing, which is awesome. Yay. Yay. Good job. Okay. Kelly says, after losing everything from COVID, I'm finally ramping back up. Right. So, right, revenue, you can look at that. You can say like, what happened? There's probably some really good reasons, whether it's, hey, I didn't put myself out there or COVID or whatever, right? Marketing. Did you have a specific marketing plan in 2020? Did it work effectively and lead to results? How'd things go? Often when I ask this question, um, entrepreneurs are like, like I tweeted, you know, but not a real marketing plan not a, and this is something that I definitely help people develop. It's okay if you didn't, right? Like, just be honest. Did you have a specific marketing plan in 2020? How'd it go? Um, there have been plenty of things that we've tried marketing wise that just didn't pan out for whatever reason. It's all just feedback, right? Um, Here's what, here's what I'm most interested in. Well, not most, but like this is the primarily what's super important. Impact on clients and customers. So do you, with the work that you're doing, do you feel that you're having a powerful impact on people's lives? Do people get excellent results from hiring you? Do people rave about you, post reviews, send thank you cards in the mail, that sort of thing? You know, think about how that is. And, you know, I tell this story um, or have been telling this story recently that like um, I had somebody earlier in the year, uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm very vocal politically um, and I'm not shy about sharing my political opinions. And I had a client who um, didn't like that and fired me. And um, in the same day, I got an email from a 12 year old who was saying like, hey, thank you for speaking out and saying what you say, like you're making my relationship with my mom easier because you're having an effect on her. And I was like, you know what? I'll take this letter from a 12 year old any day any day over somebody that wants to try to tone police me or tell me like me a grown ass woman what I'm gonna say, right? So think about that. Think about the impact that you're having and does that matter? Um, Patricia says, that was my only A, you're doing great. You're doing great, okay? If that was an A, we can work on all the rest, Patricia. We absolutely can. Um, Hi, Angela. I just saw your, I just saw your post. Okay. All right. Integrity. Integrity. I'm just going to move my, one of the things about having my office redone, y'all, is that I don't yet have cute blinds back on some of these windows. And so I'm like always like moving around to avoid the sun. <laughs> I'm like, Lord help me. It's still not, it's still not around. It, this, my office is an old sunroom. This house was built in the twenties. And um, so the sun like goes all the way around. <sighs> Problems, not really. All right, integrity. How do you feel about your integrity? Do you follow through? Do you do what you say? When you make a promise, do you keep it? Consistency. This is where I gave myself an A. I was very proud of this. Like despite what was happening in the world this year, no matter how hard it was, I showed up very consistently. We didn't miss a single email. We didn't miss a single Go Time TV episode. We didn't miss a single podcast episode. Um, are you sending your invoices? Are you paying your quarterly taxes? Are you sticking to your business and office hours? Um, or are you like, you know what? I, I'm a little loosey-goosey here. 
Like I probably could be more consistent. Uh, let's see what y'all are saying. Gabrielle says better, but not great. Okay. Mary says, I'm just a girl who can't say no. Mary, does that get you in trouble? Valerie says, I wrote every single day as usual, pandemic or not. Amazing. Okay. So Gabrielle, if you gave yourself a C on consistency, this is also great news because remember like your C's, your D's and your F's are where your money is. And so if we can get you to be more consistent, imagine the revenue gain there. So Shirley says, hi, Shirley, I'm great at planning, but not executing. So it's like, Shirley, I was talking about this with a client the other day um, who wants to write a book. And there are certain things that being a lone wolf, if you can just recognize, um, hey, I'm just not great on my own. I need accountability. I either need a coach or a group or whatever. Like there's no shame in that. I work so much better in collaboration. So, I mean, part of the reason why I'm so grateful for my team is that they really keep me consistent. They really keep me, they're like, hey, where's the script for GoTime TV? Hey, like you said you were gonna do this or whatever. Like I need people around me because there's only so much that you can accomplish on your own. Um, so you can lone wolf it for a while, but like if you have some bigger goals, you really need an accountability partner or a group or something like that. Amy says, integrity is good, consistency is meh. I'm getting there, but I'm definitely not an A yet. So for entrepreneurs, one of the things, if, if you find yourself struggling with consistency, I will say that one of, the, one of the ways that you can attract your ideal clients is by showing up consistently because it creates a feeling of safety. They, they feel they can count on you. Um, you know, they, they see you doing stuff and it's also energy. There is a real energy behind someone who does what they say they're going to do, and they're consistent about it. Um, and that doesn't mean perfection, right? That doesn't mean that everything I produce is a work. There are plenty of things where I do think we need to, and I do this, I'm like, good enough. It's much better if this gets off my hard drive and out into the world than if it's, you know, super perfect. Um, and Anna Mika <clears throat> will tell you, Anna, who's my COO, prior to becoming my COO, she was my Facebook ad strategist. And she was saying the other day, I can't remember what call we were on, but she was like, surprisingly of all my clients, Susan was the least, like she was like done, yes, approved, send it out into the world. Like I don't sit around and him and haw over things, which is another thing that I wanna encourage you all to think about is like, how can you become a quick decision maker? Because stalling out on making a decision is expensive, costs you a lot of money. Yeah, not version 40,000 times. No, no, no. Now, there are things that I'm grateful people made me slow down and get better at, like book proposals, but that's a different kind of animal. Okay. Leadership, leadership, how do you, how do you grade yourself about that? So that's like doing the right thing when nobody's watching, being courageous instead of being passive. Um, did you speak up about issues that mattered to you this year? Did you use your business as a platform? I think that this is important um, because the world needs us. The world needs us to lead. Being a leader doesn't mean, leadership isn't about being in charge, okay? You can be a leader and it's just you, right? But it's, it's about doing the right thing. And joy, how would you rank your joy? There's no point running a business if you feel miserable. And you, did you feel joyful at work this year? Now, 
there are many things that may have impacted your joy. And I want to stop here because fun, like one of my mantras is the more fun I have, the more money I make. And I am a very joyful person. Um, I am somebody who, one of my biggest motivators, um, I always talk about stay in the miracle. Um, I never want to be someone who isn't just blown away by like wonderful things. A couple of years ago, I remember I walked into this, it was in Canada, it was in Montreal, it was Thanksgiving. So it would have been two years ago now. Um, and I walked into this amazing um, hotel restaurant and they had this big roaring fire and it was just sort of, and it was snowing. It was like this picture perfect moment. And I was like, please don't ever let me become a person who doesn't appreciate a scene like this. So I consider myself a very joy filled, grateful person. And yet I gave myself a C in the joy department for this year. I did. And guess what? That's good news. That's good news because I can do joy. Like returning to joy as a homework assignment, I know that's where my money is. That's where my money is. So think about that. Gabrielle says, I stressed a lot this year too. Um, Valerie says, joy was my jam. Oh, good, Amy. Good for leadership. Lots of joy and misery, <laughs> Angela. Patricia gave herself a D in joy and self-care an F. Guess what I need to work on? This is all good news. It's all good news because, um, and listen, there were, so right, like I have reasons why I was more disconnected from my joy, right? But it's like, okay, I can have those reasons and I can choose Okay, what do I need to do to return to joy? I have um, changed up my morning routine. There's a lot of things that I've done to return to joy. And for me, it's like running a business it, to me is like the greatest creative expression that I could have. And so if it's not joyful, I got to figure out why not and make some changes, right? Self-care. That was the next section. If you're depleted and unwell, right? It's very hard to lead. It's very hard to have impact. It's very hard to um, do what you need to do to generate the revenue that you want. And I will say myself, I would give myself an A in self-care. I would, but it, let's say, this is typically where women fall down. Um, so you're not alone if self-care was problematic for you or less than stellar. Some of you have already said, Mary says, working on it. I've started walking every morning. Oh, that's awesome. Candace, self-care F. Um, Gabrielle, self-care is a C plus. Okay. My husband just, just told me he was going to take a nap for some self-care. Ladies, be like my husband, right? Often we have our greatest teachers in our household. Often we have our greatest teachers in our household, but right, like self-care. So I started talking at the top. I was ranting a little bit about the holidays and, you know, instead of over-efforting to provide a magical holiday for everyone, let's focus on our own self-care. What kind of sleep are we getting? What kind of power foods are we eating? Are we moving our God pods? Are we having quiet time? You know, what's necessary for you to give yourself an A in self-care? I would love to hear your ideas. Like, what do you consider self-care A plus behavior? Joy says, I love my self-care, my gifts and my treats. Awesome. I can tell we would be friends, Joy. All right. Okay, here's what I want to know too. So while you're busy writing um, like what you think pop in A plus self-care is, 
what were your favorite business wins of the year? So it could have been like a letter like I got from that 12 year old. It could be, I mean, you made the most money you ever made. It could be you developed a whole new program or you st finally started your business or you got a podcast off the ground or you hired your first assistant. Like, what is it? What are your favorite business wins? I'm just looking at my report card. I printed mine out and I did this. I do my own homework. I would say one of my favorite business wins was the growth of my masterminds, which we're gonna talk about. I'm really proud of that. But what about y'all? What were your favorite business wins? I also started GoTime TV. I'm pretty proud of that too. Um, Candace says one client referred more than 10 people to me. Amazing. Um, Angela says favorite business wins was the wine free work week challenge and the revenue that came after that. So good. Kelly says sold out my online group class and every woman in there was top notch. Doubling my one on one prices. Yes, go Kelly. Y'all are so inspiring. Okay. Y'all keep those business wins coming and then also be sharing. What were your favorite? Because listen, please share. Don't hold back because what I know for sure is that women in community sharing what's going well helps lift us all higher, inspires me to do better, inspires people reading that chat to go for it because they're like, wow, look what Angela did. Wow, look what Kelly did. Wow, look what Gabrielle did. Um, so also what were your favorite personal wins of the year? And that might be, you know, you finally started walking or you healed a relationship issue or you went back to therapy, um, hired a stylist, like it could be anything. What, were, what are some of your favorite personal wins? What did I write? My I wrote showing up no matter what. It was hard sometimes this year to show up. Honestly, really was. And the thing that kept me showing up was y'all. It was like, hey, guess what? If you help one of them today, it's going to be worth it. Um, Angela says, buying our dream house. Whitney says, getting engaged and buying first home. Patricia says, I dumped a client. That's so awesome. That didn't work for you. Valerie says, writing so very much. Decorating my dream office. These are all so good. Getting the home gym fully furnished. Oh my God, Kelly, I have yet to see pictures of this home gym. You have been holding out. Um, Amy says, linking up the director of curriculum and instruction in our school district and starting to plan our bold and business engineering tech ed class. So Amy is one of my bold facilitators. I'm so proud of that. And she is just setting up amazing things with that. Um, Joy says, I receive my purple carrot deliveries every week and my life is bliss. Now is purple carrot one of those food prep services or like meal delivery. I'm not sure what, or is it like juicing? What's purple carrot? Mm. Hi, Helen. Converted a room into the office, which is ready to create a hula corner. Yes. Blue apron. You guys are, oh, it's a vegan plant-based. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Look at y'all. Keep those wins coming. <sighs> Amanda completed her coach certification. Amazing. Okay. What was your biggest mistake, failure, poor decision, or what you learned? Okay. If you're feeling brave, you can share that. You don't have to. What did I write? I actually wrote that... Um, I need to be a better CEO. Like being a CEO is relatively new for me. And I was talking with, I was, I was um, being interviewed 
for the art school podcast, Leah Battersher. And she said, this time last year, I was having dinner with you at the end of my mastermind experience. And you asked us all, what were we stepping into? Um, what was the word that we were going to live into for 2020? And she said, you said CEO. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm saying that again. <laughs> I got to learn. I got to learn how to CEO better. Um, or, or maybe CEOs are just like me, visionaries all over the place, but I got to, I got to do better with that. And that's okay. Um, Amy says, I need to get more businessy about my business, take it seriously and make it happen. Yes, Amy. Um, Patty says, I learned it's better to make a decision and not sit too long on it. I just did a podcast episode about this um, and I've been talking about this a lot that like when you stall on making a decision, it just costs you so much energy and money. It's just better to be able to make swift, confident decisions. So I hear you on that, Patty. Um, Kelly says, too, my biggest mistake was having too much revenue in one basket. So too much biz with one corporate client taught me I need revenue diversification. That's a really good lesson to learn. And look what you did. You pivoted out of that. Um, amazing. Valerie says, I failed at trying out YouTube, but it's not my platform. So that's what I learned. You know, like you got to try the. We're still learning YouTube. Mallory, who's on here, you know, she took a training course on it and we're, we're still trying to figure that platform out. I think we're doing all right. Um, now we're trying to learn LinkedIn. Um, Helen says, I could have gone live quicker. Okay. We're doing good and growing. Thank you, Mallory. All right. Fear slows, stops our flow and messes up our decisions. Time to bust past the fear. I couldn't agree more. Okay. It's just good, y'all. Like so often we don't take the time to really look at this stuff and get real with ourselves. Like how really do I feel about this? And what do I need to do to learn? Like what kind of help do we need? Like, so for every new thing that we tried to do, we've hired experts to help us. Um, and so like whatever the mistake area was, it's fine. No one's expecting perfection, no one, except maybe you. So drop that and figure out what you need. Um, and remember, I've said it a couple of times already, your money is where these C's, D's and F's are because that's the greatest potential for improvement. Um, and so moving forward into 2021, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. And I was just talking with my mastermind about this, like what having a successful business means what to you? Has it changed at all in 2020? Um, for a lot of people, um, for Mary Warren, who I'm going to talk about here in a minute, she and I both share a love of travel. And she was saying, you know, it, you, my definition of success used to be that I was always jutting off somewhere and then COVID happened and I couldn't do that anymore and was sort of forced to slow down and really take a look at things. And so she was like, I'm probably not going to travel near as much because, you know, it's a, it's a great distraction to always be jutting off somewhere. But what about you? What do you think having a successful business actually means for you. Um, entrepreneur work was more stable than my employee-based time to believe in myself. Yes, Patricia. Yes. That used to always crack me up. Not crack me up. But it is a common belief, like, well, I can't leave this stable paycheck and these benefits. And it's like, I don't, I don't know many um, corporate gigs that are really, truly stable. Like, you want to, you want to control that. And, and control is an illusion, but working for yourself, I find to be more stable. 
Um, helping people, living out my values, maximizing my unique genius, making money. Awesome, Whitney. Amanda says, successful business means financial freedom to be more charitable. Agree. Helen says, no more Mrs. Nice Guy. 100% me, go all in, stop protecting other fe people's feelings. I love it. Let people have their feelings. In fact, Helen, if you do it, I'll send you one of these. <laughs> to masks that say, let them be mad. Let people have their feelings. Let people have their feelings, okay? You cannot control their feelings. You cannot behave in any certain way um, to protect people's feelings. Patty says, raise my prices. Awesome, I love all this. Y'all, I love it. Keep these comments coming. Keep these comments coming. Okay. All right. Um, what about having a beautiful life? What does having a beautiful life mean to you? So it could be um, that you have enough, you create enough wealth to live in a certain way. It could be that you feel a certain way as you're moving through your day and your life. It could be um, time wealth that you have plenty of free time, good mental health, amazing physical health. What does it mean to you to have a beautiful life? You get to decide that. You get to decide that. To me, it's it's ultimately that I feel joyful. I, my word of the year for 2018 was delight, as in I better be fucking delighted. <laughs> 20 or 2019, that was my word. 2020's word was victory squared. Um, and that's a long story uh, between uh, Scott and I, he had this beautiful painting commissioned called victory squared. And it was, it was, it was about our relationship and, and so many things. Um, and I, I can say I lived out victory squared despite the pandemic, despite everything that happened. Um, delight. Yeah. Health, feeling great in my body. It's great to get just really clear right? Because success can mean so many different things to different people. And you just want to make sure that you understand for your own self what it means to have success in business and a beautiful life. It can't all just hinge on revenue, which I think we can all get super caught up in. And I'm here for all the revenue. Let me tell you something. I love me some money. But Money is an added cherry on top. Okay. Now we're moving on to um, 2021. So in order to make 2021 your best year ever, what do you need? What do you need training and education on? Like, so for us, we're getting some LinkedIn training. 2020, we had YouTube training. We're always looking at like, what do we need extra training and education on? So for you, like, what is that? Please feel free to put that in the comments. Um, who do you need to hire, right? So common among my clients by the time I'm done with them is they're hiring if there are kids at home and they need like a house manager or a, a babysitter or housekeepers or errand runners, personal assistant, um, virtual assistants, like what do you need? What kind of, and again, like don't get caught up in, well, I can't afford that right now, so I'm not gonna say it. We're, we're living out loud here, we're dreaming big. So if you had the funds right now to hire someone, to help you do things, what would that be? Um, we've already talked about making confident, fast decisions, but in order to make 2020, 2021 your best year ever, you need to stop stalling and stop making excuses about what. What do you need to stop stalling on? 
For me, I will tell you, um, there's nothing I need to stop stalling on right now, but I would say 2017, 2018, I was really stalling on growing my team. I had a lot of pride in being a lone wolf or like having just one assistant, like being super scrappy. Um, I had a lot of pride in being like a bootstrapper and I had to really let go of that if I wanted to really grow my business the way that I wanted. Um, but what do you need to stop stalling about? See what these answers are. Kelly says, yeah, scrappy won't work for me much longer. It can get you to a certain point. Okay, Helen says she needs training on coaching, governance, equality impact assessment, plus promised myself to do mental health first aid, first aid, suicide first aid training, amazing. Okay, okay. All right. I wanna know what those excuses are though. To make 2021 my best year ever, you need to focus strongly on what? What did I write? Oh, I put marketing in new places. So that would be LinkedIn. What do you need to focus on? Kelly says, I love LinkedIn. Nobody says that, Kelly. I'm glad to hear it. Building content, finding ideal clients. Y'all know, I y'all, I help people do that. <laughs> Marketing. Okay. Systems. Yes. All right. Oh, what is happening? Okay. Um, for 2021 to be your best year ever, what do you need to stop doing? What do you need to stop doing? Common things. I was just talking to some clients about this. You need to stop comparing and despairing. You need to stop getting dragged into doom scrolling and online fights. Okay. There are people like tagging me today and private messaging me about this online discussion that I wanted no part of. I'm like, that is, that is low dollar behavior. Low dollar behavior. It's human, right? We all find ourselves doing things that we know better, right? What are they? What do you need to stop doing? So like, um, I was talking with this brilliant client of mine. I mean, stunningly brilliant. And she was talking about, she was fixated on this one sort of celebrity person in her field who she just like kept looking at her stuff and going to her website. And I was like, your money isn't there. Okay. Like you're different than her. Stop looking at her unless you want to hire her, right? But stop it. Stop it. Anytime y'all are finding yourselves comparing and despairing, just imagine setting $100 bills on fire. I'm much better about getting out of my head and overthinking. Good. Kelly says, stop playing small. Stop trying to do everything. I need to stop education rabbit holing. That's a good one, Valerie. Okay. All right. Um, what do you need to be more consistent with? So that might be like communicating with your audience, um, showing up for business hours, self-coaching. What do you need to be more consistent with? And what do you need to honor and celebrate? What do you need to honor and celebrate? There's so much. Like, look at you showing up to this webinar at the end of 2020, celebrate that. You are continuing to show up for yourself. You are continuing to show up. That's amazing. But what do you need to honor and celebrate? Angela says, my clients. Joy says, marketing, going live, enrollments. Helen says, power moves. Valerie says, every single damn thing. 
Yes. So you've done so much this year. You've done so much. You need to give yourself credit. And hey, you might win. Y'all hang in here with me because you might win one of these beautiful necklaces. All right. Okay. <clears throat> you can do this and we can help. So, um, oh, look at this neon dress. This was a very joyful time. <laughs> this was when I was in Miami. <laughs> okay, so I wanna talk to you about, if you wanna hop on the phone later today or tomorrow with somebody and talk about my 12 month mastermind, there are some masterminders here who, if y'all feel like saying nice things, feel free to light up the chat. Um, but if many of the things y'all articulated, we can help with. And I like to say the proof is in the profit, but the proof is also in the joy. Um, so this is Jessica Miller. She has re-signed up for On The Six, and I believe she's graduating to the higher level mastermind. Um, but at the beginning of her On The Six experience, she gave this testimonial. At that time, she had generated an extra 53K in five months best, she says, best decision I ever made. I know that number is much, much higher now. Um, this is my friend, Jackie Gartman, who's a life coaching OG, the busiest she's ever been. Um, this, oh my gosh, this Kimberly Luck, she's such a joy. Her first launch in On The Six was 20K, um, best business month ever. I'm gonna just, move through some of these testimonials because of time. Um, Stacy Bruce, I love all these coaches. I wanted to get to, this is v, I re, Veronique I call VV. Um, she had her best month financially in her career ever. And she was just in the on the six group saying like, she's never made, made more money. You know, that's really saying something. She's been in the business a while. Um, Kelly Thompson is on here right now. Look at how cute you are in this picture, Kelly. So she talks about, and she mentioned it in the chat before that she had had kind of all her eggs in one basket. And so joining on the six, she was able to pivot, transform her speaking career. Um, and I think Kelly, you've made some pretty great money this year so far. Um, and then Angela, who's also here, she said she declared her Q4 goal of earning 100K and she's made $83,000 in less than a month. And it's been the most fun and easiest revenue she's created since she started her business. I mean, if that's not an amazing testimonial, I don't know what is. Look at her, so fabulous. So here's what's included. When you join on the six, again, it's, it's a 12 month program with me and my whole team. So we give you quarterly private one-on-one -on -one sessions. So we have accountability coaches at the ready. Um, it's an uplifting, amazing community. So we have a private group. Um, there are at least 12 money generating assignments. So we have challenges and assignments um, in there all the time. There are 24 live classes with me. And this is a good example of how classes go with me. Although when you're in class with me, I'll call on you. Um, there are also, in addition to 24 live classes with me, there are optional marketing classes with Anna Mika, who's my COO and strategist. So you can bring technical marketing questions about sales funnels and ads and, and all that techie stuff I don't really get involved in. Um, there are 24 of those at your disposal. We also do twice a month marketing reviews. And so um, Larissa Zazula on my team what happens is you upload whatever you want reviewed. It could be marketing copy, a sales page, a launch plan, whatever. We'll look at it and give you feedback. It's good stuff. You also get access to my digital program 
in demand. And I dare say in demand is one of the best online digital programs ever. There's also, I'm dying at some of these pictures and gifts. Um, we also have something called a quick start package. So this next group starts December 8th. And basically the quick start package, I don't know if any of you have ever done CrossFit. Um, back in the day, I hurt myself doing CrossFit. But one of the things I thought was interesting that they do is before you're out in like the general population lifting heavy things, they do this on-ramp course with you. They wanna make sure that like, you know certain things before you get out there and start throwing stuff. And um, that's how we feel about on the six. We have a quick start program, which is really an on-ramp. So you get in demand and then you get in a small co cohort, eight weeks of coaching in a mastermind group. And then we release you into the population, um, the general population. So um, that is amazing. And also all of my programs, I am committed to anti-racist trainings and resources. So we are bringing in um, DEI consultants to help our people in our programs understand how to do business in an anti-oppressive way. Also, um, for those of you who have been part of other programs, Summer of Yes, Finish Strong, um, and of course my masterminds, we deliver a beautiful box, snail mail box of goodies to your door. And um, something else that's included right now as a bonus is access to Alexandra Franzen's email writing workshop. So Alex Franzen, if you don't know, is one of the most highly paid and highly sought after copywriters there that exists. <laughs> and she um, is passionate about how you can make money just off of powerful email pitches. And so she taught for our company a whole course on email writing and you get access to that. So you get, um, I think it's actually over 70 email templates and she shows examples even from my own business of like, hey, this one email generated over six figures in revenue. I feel like that alone is worth it, but um, you also get a 30 day action plan. Um, now here's, here's the pricing stuff. Um, the options start at $19.97, all right? So we have payment plans. What you want to do is go to this URL. I'm sure Mallory's putting it in the chat. And um, when you get to that page, you can fill out an application. It's really quick. Um, and once you fill out the application, then what happens is we will, if you want one, set up a consult call with you and just decide like what's the best route for you. Um, there are a couple of different options for you. So there's the quick start, which starts at 1997. Um, but on the mastermind page, you will also notice that let's say um, you're someone who makes over $100,000 a year, then you would be like, for example, um, Angela is part of my, has signed up for my higher level mastermind, which is for women who've already hit their first six figures and they want to scale and get to multiple six, seven figures. Um, so there's a couple of different levels on the six is for women trying to get to their first six figures. And then the mastermind is for people trying to scale beyond that. Um, so uh, we're going to draw that winner. Thank you, Joy. Whitney, you're going to be so glad you upgraded your in-demand package. What'd she do? Oh, she's doing the quick start. I'm so happy. Um, Right, Mallory is making the point that if you apply, there's no obligation, okay? We're not pushy on these consult calls. What we're trying to do is just make sure we serve in the best way possible and make sure that we understand what you need. And certainly there are times when it's evident that it's not a good fit. And so there's no harm 
and making application and chatting with somebody on my team to see if that's going to work for you. So we would, of course, love, 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 love to have you. Um, it is my greatest honor to help women create wealth for themselves. Um, I firmly believe that for us to have social, economic, political power, that takes money. And the more money I can help women make, the better.